Hello everyone, I hope you're all doing very well. So today, as requested by you guys, the viewers, we're looking at how atmospheric effects, i.e. cloud and fog, affect air-to-air, IR-guided and radar-guided missiles or and radar locks or radar tracks. And we have looked yesterday at the effect that these environmental ha effects have on SAMs and that was very curious on some SAMs it had a massive effect on some SAMs it had no effect on some SAMs um, it had what we think is the wrong effect and we were looking at optical SAMs and IR guided SAMs in that case so what difference is it going to make to air to air missiles so we're going to go and find out now my understanding is that in reality it will have an effect I believe on radar and on IR guided Seeger head how much of an effect in reality I have no idea don't know if there's any data out there but I certainly haven't found any so let's go and see what we've got in DCS um, now I've been doing DCS for several years and I've never noticed any effect of cloud on IR or Fox uh, sorry or radar guided missiles and I fired you know plenty of missiles so I would have thought I should be able to tell by now but you never know I may have missed it so what we've got here is a static repeatable scenario we've got a main plane down here which will fly as an F-15 which I can fly easily uh, and a backup F-18 in case we need to repeat any data. And we're going to be flying along at 2,000 feet, roughly ASL at a set speed, uh, against a baddie. Here's a baddie, it's an F-14, and he's just a dummy. He's just going to fly towards me and get shot. We're going to try in clear weather, then we're going to try in fog, full fog, then we're going to try in full cloud, and then we're going to try in full cloud with precipitation. First thing I'm going to do flying towards this guy is keep trying to get a lock, a radar lock or a radar track, as it should be called and note the point at which I can get the radar track in terms of distance and see if that varies depending on the environmental. Uh, when I've got the radar tr track I'll just check it is a fully operable track by firing a missile and make sure that missile hits but I don't expect that bit to be a problem. If I can get a track a missile should hit every time. We're then going to repeat, uh, he's invincible so the missile won't kill him, he's just going to carry on like a dummy, we're going to keep flying towards him. And we're going to repeat the experiment essentially with the Fox 2s at that point, uh, AIM-9 Mike. So we're going to slave them to our existing radar lock and they will auto lock onto this guy at a certain range when they detect his IR signature. And again what we'll see is if environmental does have an effect on the seeker head then the distance at which it auto locks will be different for each environmental setup once i get the lock i'll also fire the missile to make sure it hits but again i'm pretty accurate uh, pretty happy that once it does get a lock an ir lock it will hit we'll be doing everything at 2000 feet asl the reason for that is to keep it static and retestable so that we can test the fog at the same altitude that we can test the cloud and about 2000 feet is the only uh, altitude that we can do that so we're not going to be trying this vertically so what you could say when you think about firing through fog and cloud sometimes you think look I can fire upwards um, from clear up through a vertical cloud layer and then to a target that's above that cloud layer we're not going to be doing that because that is going to be virtually impossible to test empirically what we're going to be do doing is uh, firing through several miles of horizontal fog and horizontal cloud that is something we can repeat and test scientifically so let's go on with it my predictions are, I like I said, I've never felt any effects before, so I don't think it will have any effect. That said, the experiment that we did regarding SAMs did have a massive effect on some of the SAMs, at least, on some of the IR SAMs, so maybe I'm completely wrong. Maybe I've just been measuring it wrong. Oh, we're going to do a control test, first of all, as ever, without any environmental effects, just to get the control values, and then we'll take it from there. Here we go. Just going to turn that sound down. We don't need loud sound today. Okay. Radar on. So the first thing we're going to do is find when we can get a lock. So all we're going to do, uh, a track, sorry, all we're going to do is keep roughly at the same altitude, head towards the guy, keep pressing the track of the lock button until we can acquire a track. Pressing it two or three times a second. Ping. We got him at 25.3 in the control. So, 25.3, let's try launching a missile. Well, I mean, I don't really have to, but it is a control test, so I suppose I should. So, ping. Just over 25 miles with the Fox uh, 1. Look at it, loft. Woo! I don't have my track IR on today, so I can't do any fancy camera work. Um, okay, that's it. Let's just head towards the guy. I just realised that I was way out of range, so... Um, 
I'm obviously not going to hit him. So that part of the experiment is null with the radar guided missiles in that case. But again, um, it doesn't really matter whether the missile hits at that kind of range. Uh, I'm not too interested in. Scratch it, I've changed my mind. I will fire the missile at the maximum range of the missile just to make sure it can hit. I'm sure it will. Maximum range of the missile is going to depend on my speed, so I've got to keep about, remember to keep about 340 knots for each of these. Again, I'm pretty sure whether the missile hits or not is irrelevant for today in terms of radar guided at least. That's the missile, it's Fox 1 now. Up he lofts. See the baddie now. Right, now I've got to start thinking about um, that missile will continue to guide, and what I'm doing is. Uh, let's see how this is going to work. I've now selected my sidewinder, and um, what's going to happen is that sidewinder is not going to do anything uh, until I get within the theoretical range of the missile, and that is actually just about to come there. When the theoretical range of the missile is reached, uh, I should just point this out, um, that there is the R max of the missile, then an ASE circle will appear here and that means we know we're in the ballistic range of the missile now the actual distance that what we can quite an IR lock head on like this with him at low throttle is going to be much lower than um, the the ballistic range of the missile all we're going to do is keep I'm going to keep the guy here within my ASE circle I'm not even sure I have to I think I just have to keep him roughly in front of me but just to be safe I'm going to keep him on my ASE circle at that point and then when the uh, IR seeker head which is slave to the uh, radar track here detects the heat of him, the contrast of him, it will automatically lock and that will tell us our next bit of information. So I'm just going to multitask a bit here. Our Fox 1 will be hitting So There it is. Right, so that is our ASE circle. We're in ballistic range of the Fox 2, but we have not got a lock yet of uh, the IR lock. Why is that Fox 1 didn't hit? Boom, there it is. Stop! 2.6 miles for a Fox 2 lock, and it's a control test, so we've got to fire the missile. Ping! Will it hit? Yes, obviously will hit. Okay, so we've got our data there. Now we're going to start introducing some. Uh, some environmental effects so the first thing we'll introduce is fog we're going to have a maximum amount of fog so the zero visibility and the maximum thickness up to 3200 asl we're going to save that and see if we have any difference ping bvr radar on ah oh, the fog hasn't worked must have done something silly let's try again the fucking fog's not working. Fog is not working. What am I doing wrong? Am I being an idiot? Fog enabled. Visibility. Zero. So maybe that's upsetting it for some reason. Let's give the same visibility we had uh, on the SAM test. Maybe that will stop it from being upset. Come on. Listen to me. Do what I say. That's more like it. Right. Got a visibility of 800 feet odd. Okay, so BBR, radar on, zoom out, find the baddie. Uh, start pressing lock. Speed up to 340. Ping! 25.3, exactly the same as it was last time. Yeah, I can see where this is going. 25. So next thing we do is fire a missile at our maximum R max at 340 knots, and I'm sure it will hit. Okay, nine miles. We're in. Oh, we're in range. Fire. Select the skywinder. Wait for the uh, ASE circle. In range. Wait for the lock. Impact. Uh, we get a lock. We get a IR signature at 2.6 miles, which is identical to the, the control. Okay, that's just as we thought. And is it going to hit? I can already tell you that it is going to hit because it just is, isn't it? 
Yes, it is hit. Right, so fog has no effect on at least the F-15's missiles. So that's uh, next. We're going to pion, uh, turn the fog. Oops, leave that where it is. Turn the fog off and fine, do that. And turn the clouds on with no precipitation. Save. Let's try it out. Oh, it's even murkier. Leave the arm, radar on, Take the weapon. 340 knots, bish bash bosh. A lock acquired 25.4, exactly the same. Fire the missile, choose the sidewinder. It's funny how it lofts even down here. A little bit silly, isn't it? ASC circle. Impact, that's not what I wanted. Uh, range 2.6, exactly the same. Fire the missile. I'm sure the missile will hit. I've never missed in fog or anything before, so yes, of course. Right, cloud has no effect. Let's try precipitation of maximum. I'm sure this will have no effect as well, but we'll try. Always likely to be wrong. <coughs> I mean, it is the precipitation in the fog uh, that, you know, causes the IR problem, as far as I'm aware, so maybe it will. Jesus, that's hard to see. That's okay. Uh, BVR, radar on, zoom out, weapon select, find the baddie. That is really hard to see, isn't it? Now, you can, can, you can change the colour of your HUD, but I've forgotten how to do it, so don't ask Supercap. I don't know how I'm going to see my speed. I'm going to have to guess it. Oh, I've got a lock. Uh, that says 24.9. Uh, I mean, that's half a mile less than previously. It may be just my clicking that's doing it, but go with the data. So that's with precipitation. Right, let's continue. Oh, I can see my speed like this now. Look. Altitude's climbed a bit. Let's get that back down. Missile is fire! Sidewinder. AC circle. Have an impact shortly. Impact. And wait for the auto slave lock. 22.6 miles. It's, it's the same. 2.6, 2.6, 2.6, 2.6. 2 right. Uh, so precipitation had no effect, cloud, dry cloud had no effect, fog had no effect on any of those locks and or missile hit. In fact, I better fire the missile, but I'm guaranteed it's going to hit. Pew! Pew pew lasers! Slam in the face. Uh, so that's that. Um, now the next thing we have to rule out is whether it's an FC3 problem. So we need to use another jet. I'm going to try using the F-18. Now I'm pretty hopeless in an F-18 as you all know. But we'll give it a go. So to cut things short in the F-18, I will just do precipitation and control. Right, so we need to go mass arm on, ed, ed, on, select the missile. I don't have any to select, but I'll see if I can get a lock anyway. I should still do the same thing. Right, uh, he's here. Double click. Hmm. It's going to be a bit different in the Hornet because it's got a much better radar. Um, I'm not sure how we're going to do this. Uh, I think I might just do the Sidewinder in the Hornet because I'm just not experienced enough about how we the maximum range we can attain a radar lock and exactly how that's going to work, what, what it's going to tell me if I can't attain a radar lock. So we're going to see if we can slave our Fox 2 to our radar track. So we're going to select our Fox 2. You can see that circle there. This is how it works. Of course, we've got the radar track, which is the box there. Our uh, circle, which is the little circle here, which is the seeker head, um, is slaved inside the box, as you can see. But it will only get a lock to fire. It'll only get the actual uh, IR seeker contrast lock once we get a buzz, a tone in a, you know, a fire cue. So uh, what we're going to do now is just uh, run it in. Check out altitude and everything. Oops, it's a bit hard. Okay, we're coming up to R max.
a little bit high. Okay, we're within our max. Got nine mics again. Wait for the tone. There, got a <laughs> what a surprise. Exactly, same missile. Aim nine point mic. Uh, aim nine mic. We got it two point six. Exactly as the F eight. Uh, fifteen. Let's fire. Oops, wrong button. <laughs> I'm, afraid, I'm no good in a hornet, I'm afraid. Getting too old. Thumb. Okay, and we'll just do the control now. And then I think that we can end the day and just say it doesn't have any effect on missiles. Um, you know, there's other ways we can run this test, but I think this is a pretty good repeatable way of doing it. Mr. Mr. Hornet, let's go. Right. Um, hornet goes like that. Select a radar weapon. On the guy, click track twice. Out of interest, we'll do a mode four. Why is the mode four not working? Because I need two factor authentication, that's why. Uh, 340 knots or so, in we go. So it's Sidewinder, okay, about to hit our max. Just gonna get the altitude up a bit, a little bit, a little bit there quickly. 2.6 miles, exactly the same, fire the weapon, oops, wrong button, and it's going to be a kill. Boomy, okay, so that's that, I mean, um, yes, uh, let's not dwell on that. Um, fog, cloud, precipitation has no effect on radar guided tracks slash missiles, or IR guided uh, uh, lock contrast locks and missiles in DCS from what we can see with a, at least with a head-on target and I'm pretty sure it's going to be the same throughout the scope we can keep testing different aeroplanes now the reason I don't want to spend too much time on it is, is because like I said I've been doing this for, for four or five years or whatever it is now and I've never noticed any difference in clouds and stuff I don't see uh, that it's suddenly going to appear so um, now the only problem that brings up with me is that the um, the SAMs the IR SAMs and the optical SAMs were affected by cloud and fog but the aeroplanes Aren't. It seems a bit weird to me. Um, I don't see why it would be programmed like that. It doesn't make any sense. That's where we are with that. Let me know your thoughts and I'll see you later.